Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on static electricity. The topic of this video is solving difficult electric field problems. We want to know how can we use the electric field equation combined with vector physics and algebra in order to analyze some pretty complex electrostatic situations. Well, I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. In a previous video, this one, I discussed the mathematics of electric field. You'll find a link to this video in the description section below. Here's what we learned when we discussed that video. The electric field at any location around a source of charge is equal to a proportionality constant K whose value is given multiplied by the quantity of charge on the source that creates that electric field divided by the separation distance from that location to the center of the source charge. Now, in order to be successful in this video, there's a few things that we need to know. First of all, we need to understand that the electric field is a vector and its direction is defined as the direction that a positive test charge would be pushed or pulled when placed in any given location in space. Second, electric field vectors can be added and they can be resolved in all the ways that we do it to any vector using Sokotoa and Pythagorean theorem. Third, you need to know a few things about units. That one microcoulomb is equal to 10 to the negative 6 coulombs and 100 centimeters equals 1 meters. Finally, you need to understand that this video isn't for everybody, but if you are an honors physics course, or a college physics course, or an IB physics course, or an AP Physics 1 course, this video has a lot to teach you that you're going to need to use for those courses. In the first problem, we have two charges, A and B, that lie along an axis as shown and are 80 centimeters apart. The quantity and the type of charge on A and B are indicated in the diagram. We want to calculate the value for the net electric field at the midpoint between A and B, that is at the 40 centimeters mark. So there's two charges here, and each creates its own electric field at this midpoint. We want to calculate the value of each and then add them together to get the net electric field. When it comes to A's electric field, it's directed to the right because A is a positive source charge and it pushes a positive test charge to the right. B, on the other hand, pulls the positive test charge towards it. Its electric field is directed to the right as well. To calculate the value of these electric fields, we need to use the equation and substitute in the quantity of charge on A and the distance between A and this midpoint, which is 40 centimeters, but I want to put it into meters since the value of K is expressed in the unit's meters. Now when I do my math, I end up getting the value for E caused by source charge A at this midpoint. I can repeat the process for source charge B. I have to use the quantity of charge and I have to use the distance, again 0.40 meters. Now you'll note that in the equation I have substituted in the, the absolute value of the charge and that's just simply because the negative on the charge of B is the type and what I want to put into my equation is the quantity of charge, the value. When I do my math here I get a second value for the electric field caused by B. Now that I've calculated the values of EA and EB, I can calculate the net electric field values. Since they're headed in the same direction, I simply add them together. And when I do, I end up getting the value 5.06 times 10 to the fifth newtons per coulomb directed rightward. In problem two, I have two source charges, A and B. The quantities of charge and the type are shown. Their distance from a point P by 16 centimeters and 9 centimeters, and I wish to calculate the net electric field at point P. That's the net electric field, which is simply the sum of what you get when you find the electric field from A, which is directed to the right since A is a positive source charge, and the electric field caused by source charge B, which is directed downward since B is a negative source charge. Once I calculate these two values, I can add them together as vectors and calculate the net electric field. Finding the individual values of EA and EB is straightforward. I simply use my math equation, substituting in the quantity of charge on A, and the distance 16 centimeters is translated to 0.16 meters since the value of K uses units of meters. I square that value of D and I calculate my value for EA. I repeat the process for the electric field caused by source charge B. Uh, you'll notice that for the value of Q, I use the absolute value. I don't put the negative 3.6 times to the negative 6 in there since Q stands for the quantity of charge and the negative is simply the type. I also have to convert the 9 centimeters to 0.09 meters and square it and I end up with my two values for the electric field of A and B. So now to calculate the net electric field, I have to add the rightward vector and the downward vector together. So I draw them out starting with the rightward vector and to its arrow head, I add the downward vector and the electric field, the net electric field, is simply going to go from the tail of EA to the arrow head of EB and I've drawn it there 
it's the hypotenuse of a right triangle, and I want to calculate it using Pythagorean theorem. So I set it up as e net squared, the hypotenuse is equal to ea squared plus eb squared. I substitute in my calculated values of ea and eb, and I solve for the net electric field. It comes out to be 4.43 times 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb. Now that's the magnitude. I also want to know the direction of this net electric field vector, and that's why I have the theta, the angle theta, in the triangle. Uh, theta, the tangent of theta would be the ratio of the side opposite to the side adjacent. So I take values of the side opposite and the side adjacent, and I substitute it into that tangent equation, pull out my calculator, and find out what the inverse tangent of 4 divided by 1.898 is. Comes out to be 64.6 degrees. So what that tells me is the angle theta inside the right triangle there. So the direction of the hypotenuse is 64.6 degrees south of east, or expressed using counterclockwise convention, it would be 360 minus the 64.6 degrees, or 295. Point four degrees counterclockwise. In problem three, I have two charges that occupy positions at the corners of an equal angular equilateral triangle, and I wish to calculate the net electric field at the top point P of this triangle. To determine the net electric field, I once more need to find the individual fields caused by source A and source B. Source A's electric field is going to be directed along the line connecting A and point P, and directed upward since A is a positive source charge. The same thing can be said of the electric field created by source B. It's going to be directed along the line that connects B to P and directed upwards away from it. Now the quantity of charge on A is equal to the quantity of charge on B, and the distance of these two source charges to point P is going to be the same, 0 0.80 meters or 80 centimeters. And so I can state that the calculation of EA would be the same as EB, and I can easily do it by substituting in the quantity of charge on either A or B and the distance of 0 0.80 meters and squaring it. I end up getting 3.93 times 10 to the fourth newtons per coulomb as the electric field value of both A and B. Now that we've calculated the two electric field values, E, A, and E, B, let's talk about the strategy as how to get the net electric field. The direction of these two individual fields is as shown, and they each have x and y components. A matter of fact, we could say that the x component of E, A is equal in magnitude to the x component of E, B, and they had the opposite direction. So when we add all the components to get the net electric field, these two values are going to cancel, the E, A, X, and the E, B, X which means the only thing we have left to add are the vertical components of EA and EB. And they're going to be the same value since they have the same magnitude and direction. Now to calculate that, once I calculated them, I could simply double the EAY and I'd have my net electric field vector. So now I'll go about calculating the vertical component of EA by using the magnitude of EA and the direction that it makes with the horizontal, which for an equal angular triangle, it makes a 60 degree angle with the horizontal. So I'm going to go EA multiplied by the sine of 60 degrees, and when I do, I get the value for the Y component of EA. Now there's a Y component of, of EB that's exactly the same as this, so E net is simply twice this EY value, EAY value, and that comes out to be about 6.82 times 10 to the fourth newtons per coulomb directed upwards. In problem four, I have positively charged A and negatively charged B lying 100 centimeters apart along the axis. And I want to know at what position would the net electric field caused by A and B be equal to zero? So this gets complicated because you have to first kind of decide on ex where, where it might be. Uh, could it be between A and B? And the answer is no, because everywhere in the space between A and B, the electric field of A is to the right and the electric field of B is to the right, and they would never cancel each other. So the location we're looking for is either to the left of A or to the right of B. Which one is it? It ends up being to the left of A, and this is why. Charge A has less charge on it than charge B. So what it lacks in terms of charge, it must make up for in terms of distance in order to come up with an electric field that is going to balance the field of B. And that means that we have to put the charge closer to A than to B in order for these two electric fields to ever be equal to one another. So it's somewhere to the left of A. I, I marked it there in the diagram as point P. It's some distance X from A. And if it's that far from A, it's one meter plus x from charge B. And I want to know what's the value of x for which 
EA equal EB. So I'm going to start there. I, I start with expressions that EA is equal to EB. And I just write it out like that. You'll notice my denominators are x and 1 plus x quantity squared. And then I'm going to cancel the value of k since it shows up both places and simplify my equation. And then I'm going to take the square root of both sides of this equation. And when I do, it looks something like this. Now, I theoretically, I should be able to solve for x because it's the only unknown in the, one, in, the, in the equation. But exactly how I do it is going to get kind of complicated. My next step is I cross multiply in, in order to um, simplify it in, in this manner. And then, and then I'm going to distribute the square root of QA to both terms on the left side of the equation. And then I'm going to group my x terms together on the right side of the equation. And finally, I'm going to factor out an x and divide through by the coefficient in front of x. I have an x equal equation now. And I know the quantity of charge on A and the quantity of our charge on B. I skip the negative because it has nothing to do with quantity. It has to do with type. And I substitute in these values into my equation. And I solve for the value of x. And it comes out to be 5.889 and some change in meters. In other words, 589 centimeters, meaning the answer to the question at what location would the net electric field be zero is 589 centimeters to the left of charge A. You got this. It's at this time in every video I like to help you out with an action plan. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here's two resources from our website, and you'll find links to them in the description section. Either one of these resources would be great follow-ups to this video. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.